Hi, Louis. Welcome to Rolling Stone India. I'm Devashree. Hello. Thank you for having me. How are you doing? How have you been? Uh, where are you right now? What you're doing? I mean, are you working? Are you on a holiday? What is it? So um, I just finished shooting for seven months in uh, Budapest, and okay. uh, um, now I'm taking a little bit of a holiday. I'm in uh, the mountains in an island in Spain called Mallorca, up in an area called Valle de Mosa, where uh, you know Chopin, the pianist is where he composed a lot of his nocturnes and it's a very beautiful countryside area surrounded by orange groves and wineries wow. Um, wow. Really okay so uh louis tell me something whenever i have seen you performing on screen you're like a spectacle personified like an explosion waiting to happen and whenever you do your stunts your fight sequences your 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 action sequences uh you do it in a way which looks like a picture perfect frame to me sometimes they look so artistic so help us delve a bit deeper into your creative process that helps in uh, choreographing these brilliant visuals well thank you for saying that um it started a long time ago with my father because my father is a martial artist, a gymnast. He's a stunt coordinator, a fight choreographer who did, you know, Batman with Tim Burton. He did Indiana Jones with Steven Spielberg, um, the movies, the Inception movies, Pirates of the Caribbean movies. So I grew up around someone who's taught me from generation to generation how to perform not just martial arts, but exciting action sequences for the camera. So he was teaching me to fight when I was a kid. I was learning martial arts. I was learning fight choreography. And um, it's very similar to dancing in a way where you don't just want to create something shocking or something crazy. You want to make something look, look beautiful, you know, and look something uh, that, that you haven't seen yet on screen. So whenever I'm doing a fight, scene or, or um, I'm doing a choreographed action sequence, I'm trying to do something <laughs> that either I haven't done before personally, or I haven't seen before. Thanks. So, you know, I think I can add my own style, my own flavor to the character, to the, to the performance uh, because of my, the history that I've grown up with, you know, training with not just my father, but many different uh, people have taught me throughout my life. So it's an accumulation of a lot of different people, you know, mm. and a lot of different teachers. Right, right. You know, I read this somewhere that martial arts is not just about fighting. It's about building a character. So uh, what is your take on this? And how would you elucidate uh, martial arts considering the supremely skilled martial artists that you are? Well, it's true. Martial arts is supposed to be at the truest form of um, expression. You know, it's uh, something that is similar to acting and similar to life. It's similar to meditation because you can't lie when you're doing martial arts. When you're really doing martial arts, you can't lie because the lie can be easily exposed by another person who's better than you or someone who has, who's thinking quicker than you or, you know, so I think in a way, a true martial arts is a, is a, is a form of expression with the body, with the emotion with the mind, with your heart, you know, with your, your spiritual center and everything together is performing at once. And that's, that's how you can really create that. But it doesn't happen often. You know, it's very rare to get that synchronicity to flow perfectly, you know? So that's why it's, um, it's a lifelong journey, lifelong learning. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful that I can add that to the screen and show, show people some, some of it on the screen you know right and uh, you know we have seen you in so many movies in television content in web content which includes you know uh, into the badlands uh, who assassins fistful of vengeance deadpool 2 mortal kombat of course uh, all action stuff so how difficult it is for you as an artist as an actor to continuously reinvent yourself and keep adding novelty to the action sequences that you do in each of your projects that's a very good question. It, it's difficult because for different reasons. Number one, everything starts with the script. Everything starts with the story. If I didn't write the story, then somebody else's you know, vision is there 
And I'm, I have to hope that they want to collaborate and they want to, they want to do something new or, you know, they want to be open to the ideas. So you have this problem, number one. Number two, everybody, when you do a different movie, a different, you have a different teams that you work with. So these teams have to also be open to collaborating and bringing new ideas and wanting to push, push the boundaries. And then number three, you have to be able to perform and do everything. So right. it's, um, it's all of these factors come into play in order to make something great and to reinvent yourself. Mm-hmm. Uh, my problem that I'm, well, I have, I have, a, I have a, a champagne problem, I, sh- I, I should call it, because I've been fortunate enough to work with really, really talented people like Iko Uais, who is a mm-hmm. you know, lot, who did the film The Raid. Um, many of these guys who are masters of their craft, even like Joe Taslam in Mortal Kombat, you know, he's Olympic level judo, judo guy. The, the action teams that I've been working with are the best in the world. So I've been fortunate to have these people. Um, lastly, you have the directing, the directing team and the camera team who have to capture this fight in a unique way. For instance, if, they're, if they don't know how to shoot action sequences, a lot of people, what they do is they shoot everything all at once. And mm-hmm. they put it in the editing room. Put it and together, they hope, yes. Mm-hmm. They just hope that somebody chops it up and makes it mm-hmm. exciting. Mm-hmm. But that's not how you capture real. Yes, real, yes. Real action sequences. True. It's the same if you were watching a, a, a ballet or, or you were watching an amazing dancer. You just let the dancer dance. And you move the camera around the dancer so you can see the dance, you know? Okay. It's the same way. So all of these things come into play. Uh, what I'm working on now is developing my own productions, my own teams, my own uh, unique um, vision um, mm-hmm. as a filmmaker. So that way I don't have to, I can control all of these things. And if it's good, then it's on me. If it's bad, it's on me too, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you are known to execute your stunts. Uh, so any specific incident, any specific stunt performing which i mean something that really took a toll on you something which is ingrained in your memory because of the level of difficulty that you had to face anything that you uh, still remember yeah i mean i've been injured mm. every time you do an action film or action show you you're you're slowly getting beaten up yeah. from day <laughs> to, the, to the end is like you know that's that's the best case scenario is you're slowly yeah. just beat up from day one to the end is the best case <laughs> The worst case is you, you get an injury. Um, mm. Yeah, I've had many injuries on Into the Badlands. I broke my mm. foot and I knew I, w- I broke my foot kicking, kicking something. And yeah. <laughs> kicking a, you know, so some of, the, some of the movie sets, you have breakaway things. So mm. you, but it's still, it's still wood, but it's made to break, hopefully. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I kicked something that, that wasn't meant to break. <laughs> and I, I broke my foot instead. Oh, and, uh, and uh, yeah, I wasn't finished with the fight, so I just took some duct tape. And I just mm. wrapped it up mm. and put it back in the shoe and kept going, you know. And then I went to the hospital after. Um, and but my foot is still like, like crooked. Um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. And then uh, just now, I just finished a TV series called Shadow and Bone. I had some small injuries on this on this show uh, in terms of shoulder, my neck, my back. So you're always doing these things, but great, you know. Th- thankfully, I haven't had anything that doesn't allow me to continue working, you know. But uh, it's like any 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 athlete, any professional athlete, you're gonna have to deal with injury. That's the way it is. You're never gonna go into a fight with no injuries. You're never gonna go into a basketball game with no injuries, never. So, you know, it's something you deal with as an actor who performs your your own stunts. You always have to take care of your body as as best you can, you know? Right, right. Uh, uh, So, uh, you know, um, among the various styles that you do, you are skilled at doing so many styles. I was going through one of your interviews where you mentioned about Taekwondo, Jiu Jitsu, Muay Thai. So, which one is the most difficult according to you? Or which one is also your absolute favorite among My whatever? absolute favorite? Yeah, yeah. My absolute favorite is Muay Thai for sure. Mm-hmm. I think Muay Thai is the best striking style for, mm-hmm. you know, for real life. Mm-hmm. 
I think Taekwondo is the best style to learn if you want to do martial arts in movies. Mm -hmm. Taekwondo is the best because it's beautiful and you have really long kicks and long punches and you mm -hmm. learn footwork and rhythm. Muay Thai is very aggressive and yes. very useful, very practical. And I think it looks beautiful too, but um, I would learn Muay Thai and learn Taekwondo if you want to do it for, for real life and for movies. Mm -hmm. Um, I think jujitsu is really, really useful and really cool, but it's, it doesn't always look so great on screen unless you screen. know how to do it. Mm -hmm. I think judo is really nice, um, and can be really useful on, on the camera as well. Um, right. but you know, like, like the master Bruce Lee says, the best style is no style. That's the best style. Learn, learn everything and then just be able to flow. You know, mm. uh, uh, so uh, Mortal Kombat has been a very important part of your professional uh, career. Uh, in a nutshell, just tell us about you know uh, about Mortal Kombat and especially it's, uh, some special anecdotes with regards to the, uh, you know working in the film and what have you taken back from Mortal Kombat in terms of an experience? Well, it was an incredible experience for me for many reasons. Obviously, it is my first leading starring role in a big studio movie right. of this caliber you know um it was a it was a big deal because you're taking on a very very popular franchise that many people love and hold dear including myself i played a game when i was a kid you know my whole childhood with all my brothers so it's a very popular franchise as well as it's the first leading role for me um in this type of level of a film you know? right, right so it was challenging but it was also a very re rewarding experience. You know, I learned so much. I developed so much as an actor, as a martial artist, um, as a filmmaker, mm. and learning not just how to, how to capture the best performance, but have the mental capacity to every day get up, you know, three, four in the morning and be the best you can be all day for months because mm. I think what I've realized is the energy that you bring to this to the movie set it gets mm. captured in the camera you know when you when you when you're showing up and you're you're feeling tired you're feeling lazy and you have a negative energy this is going to get captured in the frame yeah. it's going to be there you know it's going to be there under under the under the subconscious it's there mm. developing your mind to to be open be creative, be, listen to your acting partners, to listen to your, the, the crew, the filmmakers around you. And that's the most difficult thing. That's the thing that I learned the most mm. for that film. That, that when I take the next movie, Mortal Kombat 2, or the next big action film, right. um, I bring that to it. I bring that with me. You know, I, I, I have the, the battle wounds from that. And uh, yeah, it was, and it, it was, and then also, you know, Aftermath, the movie, um, came out at a crazy time during COVID. Yes, yes, um, yes. But it, it did super well with the, with the HBO Max streaming. It's still number one yeah. as far as viewers. It beat everything. It beat Got crazy numbers, movie. yes. Yes, yes. Yeah, it beat everything. So um, I was very happy that it had that big of a response. You know, that made me very, very grateful to see that people people liked the film and, and uh, people watched it over and over, repeated viewings, you know. Have you ever thought of something like this? I mean, I'm curious to know, have you ever felt that the martial artist in you sometimes overshadows the actor that you are? Have you ever felt that you're being typecast? Have you ever felt something like that? Yes, of course, that's a good question. And yes, I do feel that way. But at the same time, I have two, I have two thoughts about this. One is I'm grateful that as an Asian actor, I can make it in this industry where I'm working, where I'm, you know, leading these amazing films, these, uh, these shows, and I can continue to practice my craft. That's my okay. first thought. Mm -hmm. My second thought is, yes, I do feel like a lot of people, I don't know, maybe people are scared to, sh to, to say that people can do more than one thing, you know? Like, oh, he's, he's just, oh. he's this, yeah, he's, he's oh. in this box. And this person is in this box. Mm -hmm. um, I never felt that I was in any box 
And mm. so it's just time for me to show different, you know, different sides. So I have a, a movie coming out in September, uh, which is like a romantic comedy film. And that was um, my next question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I have this this new. I'm just I'm trying to open up new genres, not to not to prove anything to anyone, but just for me because I I love movies. I love all all kinds of movies. I grew up on, you know, old classics, you know, Jean Luc Godard, the French New Wave, the Better Luchis, the Kubricks, you know, the right. Park Chan Wooks, you know, mm -hmm. the Wong Kar Wai's. All these different filmmakers influence me and I just love making films so I want to do every type of genre if I can you know so uh, if you are doing a romantic film if you're playing a swashbuckling hero then who you'd like to get paired with who would you like to share your screen time with an actress and why I mean there's a lot of people that I think have a big influence on me but for me it's more about working with talented directors and writers <laughs> You know, I don't really seek after looking, like trying to work with a certain actor. Mm -hmm. Somebody who likes to look at the filmmaker's work and see, right. you know, I'd, lo I'd love to work with Quentin Tarantino. I think he writes really beautifully. He's brilliant. And, uh, yeah, and he's obviously coming, or apparently coming to the end of his career. So I'd mm -hmm. love to work with someone like him. Yeah. Um, I'd love to work with, you know, people like uh, Paul Thomas Anderson, I'd love to do some unique films like uh, yeah. Alejandro Inuitu. Mm -hmm. I'd love to work with, with uh, Park Chan-wook or Bong Joon-ho. You know, these type of filmmakers that have a unique perspective, a unique, um, a unique vision. Way, yeah, exactly, a strong vision. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, I also uh, came to learn that uh, you are uh, inclined to wearing the director's cap. Uh, so tell us more about it. I mean, are you working on it? Are you doing something? Are we seeing your directorial debut any anytime soon? Yes, it is coming soon. Um, I've been I've been writing for a long time, mm. um, experimenting with different you know writing styles and screenplays. So I've written a few screenplays, and at first you know they were. I think it took a while to develop that as a whole new skill. You know, it took a while to develop that skill. I've been mm. working on it. I've been working on it. Okay. All right. Um, so yeah, I have a, a screenplay that I wrote about my father, about his storyline that I'd like to direct. And mm. um, I've been shooting short films, been shooting music videos, been shooting, you know, fashion advertisements, all this stuff a long time ago. Mm. And, uh, and, and, and up until now till recently, or sometimes to get a movie made, you shoot like, like, a short film in order to show show you know kind of the mood and the taste of what you were going to do so we sh we've shot a lot of stuff we have a lot of stuff in in production in pre-production yeah. and uh yeah the movie about my father is going to be my first one mm -hmm. it's a very interesting story about martial arts about dance in mm. 1970s london as an asian wow. man mm. who's, who's competing in the disco as well as the martial arts circuit at the same like time. Like an image of life, what, what has happened. And yes. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Right. Uh, okay, now something different that I wanted to ask you. You are quite fond of K-pop, so I've been told. So how did that happen? I mean, tell me everything about it because I am a K-pop, K-culture, K-drama enthusiast. I write a lot about K-content. So yeah. how did that happen? And who are your favorites when it comes to K-pop? Well, honestly, the K-pop thing started, I think, through through Korean cinema. Yeah. So I've been I've been a big fan of Korean cinema for a really long time. I think Korean cinema is probably they've been leading the way creatively for many years, mm -hmm. um, way back in the day, even for you know movies like Old Boy, mm -hmm. um, and like stuff like that. I think I think it's been a big influence on. Right. On, you know, even even now the the villainess was big on John Wick three, you know. So it's still influencing American films. Mm. We're stealing our stuff and ripping it off, and you know, it's it's it's. And I think I started to dive into the Korean culture when I was there in Korea. I was in Seoul filming something, yeah. and um, I was hearing it, you know, all the time the K-pop. And then when I saw 
how good the music videos were and how good the dancing was, I was like, okay, I yeah. respect, I respect good dancers because mm -hmm. I'm a martial artist. You know, I know how much it's the toll it takes on your yes, body, yes. hard yeah. it is to learn. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so I, now I have a love for, <laughs> for K-pop. Yeah. So yeah. Who are some of your uh, favorite K-pop bands, K-pop groups, K-pop artists? Is it weird that my favorite is Blackpink? Is that weird? Oh, yeah. No, it's not weird at all. I mean, I love Blackpink. They are so I like them all. I like them all, to be honest. Big Bang, BTS, Blackpink. I think yeah. um, they're great. And there's also a DJ who I really like named Yaji. She's okay. a little bit she's a mm. little less known, uh, but Korean DJ who's really cool. Mm. Um, yeah, I love, I love K-pop. I love Korea. I love Korean influence, you know, so and I love Korean food. So yeah, maybe maybe I'm maybe I'm a little bit Korean in my heart. Oh, uh, uh, so are you into Korean dramas as well? Like, uh, you know, are you watching any Korean drama or you something that you watched which like blew your mind? So any any Korean drama that you can you know you want to talk about? Uh, the most <laughs> one I just watched is um, uh, what's it called? It's on Netflix. It's a zombie one. All we're all dead. Something. All like of that. us are dead. Yes. Yeah, all yeah, of yeah. Us are dead. yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the most recent one I watched. Um, I mean, I don't know. The way that they tell stories is the way that they capture the emotion mm. and the mm. relationship between characters is mm. it's it's the best. You know, no mm. matter what, if if it's a zombie film or if it's just mm. a high school thing, or mm. they, they capture the the relationships really, really strongly. You know, and I like how how emotional the characters can be, you know? Yeah. I would, right, I, would so, just say, yeah, I think they capture the relationships really well. Yeah, true, true, true. Uh, how That's active are they? Yeah, they are, All of Us Are Dead is also coming with a, a second season. So, yes, yes, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Lewis, how, uh, what do you think as an artist, as an, as an entertainer, as an actor, what do you think about the influence of Hallyu, the influence of Korean wave on the entertainment industry, or the gro growing propensity of people towards Korean culture, Korean content. How are you seeing this? Uh, I just think it's like, for me, it's like just people catching up. You know, I mean, <laughs> like I said, I've, I've been ranting and raving about Korean movies for years. And I think people are just like slowly catching up. American American cinema culture is a little bit slow to catch up to what is what is really going on. What's really cool, in my opinion, mm -hmm. we're like two years behind always. So when Parasite won the Oscar, I was I was like, it's about time. But I was also really happy. I was so I was so happy for them and so happy to see, you know, an Asian culture get recognized by the Academy. But it was kind of for me, it was like. This is about time, you know, come on. Yeah. They've, they've been making the best movies for years. They've been stealing, Americans have been stealing the, the concepts for years. Just, you know, so the fact that they're finally catching up and giving mm -hmm. them the credit, I'm happy for that. It's great. Okay. So how active are you uh, on social media? Mm, I fluctuate between nothing and posting a lot for for work, for press, for mm. promotions. Mm. Uh, now I'm on vacation, so I'm taking nice pictures because I'm enjoying it. You know, I'm not doing it for any reason. Then if I see something really beautiful, I'll take the picture and post it. Mm. Um, but generally speaking, I'm not super active in my personal life with social mm. media. And I think no. mm -hmm. the reason I asked you is, you know, I was going through your Instagram profile. You have a lot of followers, rightfully so. But what do you think are the consequences of being in the public eye? I mean, does it bother you any which ways? I think it does have a, have a, it's positive and negative, you know, it's, mm. it's, it's, it's a positive thing because I can, I can share exactly what I'm thinking to the, to the world and it doesn't have to be misconstrued in, in an interview or in a, in, okay. you know, um, something that people heard a rumor I can clear this up very fast by just talking about it. But then it has a lot of negative consequences too, because I feel like you're taking in so much, 
so many images and a lot of these images are fake and a lot of these images are right. filtered and a lot of these images have you know you, you're you're consuming so much that mm. it's hard to be creative it's hard mm. to be creative and if you if you look at the way that the way that it's designed the way that the, the social media is designed it's mm. like like something from las vegas when you're pulling the slots you're just going and going and going and there's just so much so much stimulation that mm. for me it becomes overwhelming i have to i have to shut it off but i have to i have to be inspired by nature by the ocean by mm. a sunset by uh art looking at it in real life you know um i think that it's important for us to be cautious how you use it you know right uh, what is the other side of louis tan i mean uh are you a people's person are you a private person uh or are you someone who's friendly to many but friend to few uh what kind of a person are you otherwise when you're off the camera i have a i have a small group of friends that i care about a lot that i spend mm-hmm. time with a lot i'm i'm cautious i have many many friends but i have a small group of good friends you know right. i think it's easy for me to make friends with people in different countries i have friends all over the world literally all, probably you know all, almost everywhere um but i'm I don't let too many people in in the close mm. close circle of my energy which I think is is how everyone should be you know you don't want to have too many influences around you mm. I I choose carefully who I allow to influence my personal life you know but at the same time I'm I'm very grateful for to live a to live a you know a very blessed life and um I try my best to be open-minded and and accepting of everyone, you know. That's that's how I like to look at it. What makes you happy? What makes me happy? I think I'm happy when I'm when I'm feeling very present, when I'm mm. not feeling anxious um or when I'm not thinking too far into the future or too much into the past. When I'm right there living, I feel I feel happy, I feel good. Um I feel happy to be able to take care of my family that makes me happy. Yeah. Um I feel happy on movie sets. I love I love making movies. Um I feel happy when I'm with my dog. <laughs> uh, uh yeah. Uh so tell us uh, more about your upcoming ventures, your upcoming projects, what you're into, what you're looking forward to, everything. Well, as you know, we have Mortal Kombat 2 in the barrel, getting ready, mm-hmm. getting built up. Um we have a new writer on that film, mm-hmm. uh named Jeremy Slater, who wrote the Marvel series Moon Knight and uh a series that my friend Lily did uh from Wu Assassins uh called Exorcist. And um I'm very very much looking forward to that, taking that to the next level. Um I have a romantic comedy coming out with Emma Roberts. <laughs> Thankfully. Uh, Yeah, yeah. Called, yeah, finally <laughs> called about fate. Yeah. Um is really cool. I have a couple secret surprises in some bigger movies that I I can't discuss just yet, but um mm-hmm. they are some of the bigger movies coming out next year. And then I have uh a TV series called Shadow and Bone yeah. on Netflix mm-hmm. that I just finished shooting. that is a insane action adventure fantasy series uh and i'm really looking forward to showing that to to the world it's um it's a really cool character that i play and it's a cool world that they've built um the writer um his name is eric heiser who wrote arrival um and it was uh, oscar nominated for that so it's a it's a really well written well acted and um yeah that's what's coming up in the pipeline plus a few other things my directorial debut and um yeah i'm really looking forward to sharing all of that with people all right so uh it's been a beautiful conversation with you uh but before uh, we wrap up any message for us the viewers your fans your followers uh anybody who would be watching this interview spread more love and Follow your heart. That's it.
But I do have an interesting, interesting tidbit to tell you since this is coming out in Rolling Stone, India, correct? Um, so a long time ago, this is just a fun fact, a long time ago for the fans, um, you know, my father does, like I said, a action choreography and fight choreography. And he did an Indian film called Kurban. With Kurban, Kurban, yeah, yeah, yes. You know this movie? Yes, I've heard of it, yes, yes. So my father was the action choreographer for this film and I was helping to choreograph the fights with Seth Ali Khan um, when I was 19. Wow. So, yeah, so I met, I met Seth and we hung out and he was really cool and mm. he, was, he was a great, great fighter. And uh, yeah, I was, I was choreographing and doing the fight choreography for this movie as well when I was just a kid, you know? Mm. But anyway, this is just a fun fact for people to know so know. so if 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 opportunity comes or maybe would you be interested in doing an indian film like a bollywood masala flick or a bollywood film of course, <laughs> of course. i love those type of movies and like i said i i love dancing and i love like i, I respect the dancing so much so <laughs> but even if there's no even if there's no dancing in it i would still do it if it's a good story for sure wow okay all right. Thank you, Lewis. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, it's been a privilege to connect with you, to speak with you. Uh, I wish you the best in everything. And I hope and pray that all the happiness and joy that you share and give us as an entertainer, you know, they should multiply and get back to you. Thank so, you. okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Fun. Bye. Thank you.